In our last video of button type controllers, we talked about the advantages and disadvantages of using one over a stick. If you didn't get a chance to watch, there will be a link in the cards or details. For the people who are interested, but not fully committed, we would like to show a way to build a prototype. Buying or building this type of controller may be an expensive or time-consuming process, so a simple prototype may be a good way to test whether or not the controller is right for you. I personally played on a stick before trying buttons out, and this was a great way to find out without spending too much money. Now before going into details, there are generally two basic ways of building this prototype. The first way is to build it off an existing controller such as an arcade stick. The second way is to build one based on a third-party controller board such as a Brooks or PS360+. In this video, I will go over how to make one based on an existing arcade stick. Here are the general materials needed for the prototype. The items here are flexible and some will change based on what your goals are for this build. I'll explain the necessity of each item and equipment as we go along. Let's start with disassembling an existing arcade stick. I am going to use a Madcats TE2+, Plus, but other modern sticks should follow a similar method. First step is to open the case to gain access to the faceplate. The TE2 Plus is very easy in this regard because it is accessible through a button. Once we have access to the back of the faceplate, we need to remove the wires to the buttons and stick. It is important here to label or note which wire pair goes to which button when removing. If you do not, you will have to play a guessing game later on when connecting buttons to your prototype. I suggest making a table like I have here to record this information. Once they are disconnected, let's remove the stick and buttons from the faceplate. To remove the stick, we first need to remove the ball. This can be done by securing the shaft with a flat head screwdriver and unscrewing the ball. After the ball is removed, remove the shaft and hole cover. Then remove the base by unscrewing four screws. Most buttons will be clip tight, so squeeze the indents and push for removal. Other types may have screws, so remove the rings and push out the buttons. Once that is all done, you will need to make a plan for the prototype faceplate. If the controller allows the removal of the faceplate, you can simply create a new one and place it where the stock one was. Otherwise, you may need to build a shell that covers the controller. For the TE2+, Plus, the faceplate can be removed so a simple prototype faceplate will suffice.
Next step is to create the button layout. We are going to cut cardboard to create a faceplate for our buttons. There are two approaches here. If you do not plan on creating a custom controller, you should find a layout image of a controller you might purchase, print it out, and use it as tracing materials to cut holes. If you plan to create a custom controller like myself, you should start off with placing your hand on the cardboard and marking where your fingers are comfortable. As per my personal experience, you would most likely build multiple faceplates until settling on something you're going to like. Having extra cardboard would be advised. I also recommend getting wrist rests for ergonomic comfort, so I suggest using them when marking finger placement. Lastly, if you have access to image software, you can make templates like I have here to make revision building more methodical. If you do not, you can always use rulers and compasses to space and draw circles. Now for the buttons, most controllers use 30mm diameter buttons for the up direction and 24mm for everything else, so you'll have to cut the holes accordingly. If you want some more details on the design layout, I suggest you look at our video that compares stick to button type controllers. The link will be in the cards or details. Once you cut the holes, place the buttons into the cardboard. Now before we position the prototype faceplate onto our controller, we have to prep an adapter wire harness to convert stick inputs to buttons. You have two choices here. One is to buy an adapter wire harness from a hobby shop, the other is to build your own. The advantage of buying one is that you don't have to buy the materials or tools to build one. The disadvantage is that you won't be able to do extra customizations like duplicating directional buttons unless customizing the adapter with said materials and tools. So simply put, if you don't already have the tools and materials, and are planning to buy a generic button type controller, purchase an adapter wire harness. If you plan to build and customize your own controller, I suggest building your own. For the upcoming section, I'm going to build a custom adapter wire harness, so if you plan to buy one, you can skip to the next section. Alright, let's start off with planning the adapter wire harness design. Each button needs to connect to a direction signal of down, left, right, or up, and ground. For the ground wire, we'll need to create a chain of connections that goes to all buttons. For direction signals, we only need to make single wires unless you plan to duplicate input buttons. For the wire, I recommend using stranded type with gauges between 20 and 22. Stranded means that there are multiple strands inside the wire, and gauge indicates the diameter. The length will depend on how far your buttons are from the controller connector. Extra is always recommended, as wiggle room is nice to have. Let's start off with the direction signal wires. If you plan on duplicating buttons, you can simply strip both ends of the wire and secure one end to a quick disconnect. Quick disconnects are slots that will connect to your button terminals. Most button terminals have a size of 0.110 inches or about 2.8 millimeters. For my buttons, I am using a 0.110 quick disconnect with 18 to 22 gauge wire hole. To assemble, simply slide the bare wire into the hole, then crimp using a crimper or plier. The important thing here is that the metal parts are in contact. 
As a side note, if you are using a plier, I suggest further securing the wire to quick disconnect with electrical tape. For the ground wire or duplicate direction wires, you will need to split or daisy chain the quick disconnects. The method I am doing here is inserting two wires into one quick disconnect to allow another quick disconnect to be added to the same signal. Repeat the process until you have enough connection points for all your direction buttons. Once we are done making the wires, it is time to insert them into the connector. With the connector tab on the bottom, the pins from left to right are ground, right, left, up, and down. Once that is done, secure the wires with electrical tape. Now let's connect all quick disconnects to the button terminals. Each button will need to be connected to the button signal wire and ground. As long as the pair of wires are on the same button, order and terminal should not matter. After that, place the faceplate on your controller and secure it with tape if necessary. And there you have it, a prototype button controller for testing. Plug it in and see if it works. Hope you found our video helpful. If you have any questions or additional tips, let us know in the comments below. Be sure to check our Patreon for our latest news on video developments and other additional perks. Before we end this video, we want you to know that we developed a website called SeaLeafDojo.com for finding players and events based on games and location. 
For example, if you are looking for Guilty Gear Excerpt players in Los Angeles, California, just type it in our search bar and find players in that area. You can even search based on skill level and characters you want to play. We still have a small player base, so you may or may not find someone in the immediate area, but if you could register to grow the community, that would be greatly appreciated. Alright, till next time, have fun playing those fighting games.